Hello, people of the internet. Welcome back to R Programming 101. This is where you discover that R is not only powerful and useful, but also fun and easy to use. In this video, we're going to talk about how to get data from Excel into R. In a previous video, I talked about how you can save a file as a CSV or a comma separated value file and import it using the read.csv function. In this video, however, we're going to talk about getting it straight from Excel, straight into R, even complicated cases where the data might be sitting in a separate tab or the data might be sitting in a funny place in the spreadsheet. We're going to get it all into R, no mess, no fuss, and I'm going to finish this video in about three minutes. You're going to know exactly how to do this, so stick with me. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. So let's think about what we want to do, okay? If we've got, a, we've got an Excel spreadsheet over here and I've got the same spreadsheet, but in different kind of ways with different kind of problems. It's the same data. We wanna get that data into our environment here as an object that we can use, we can analyze it, we can do graphics, etc., etc. Now there's more than one way to do that. Up here at the top on the right, there is an import from Excel option. If you click on that, you're gonna get this little, this little screen over here. I'm gonna say cancel, I'll tell you why. If you go and you find the data on your hard drive down here at the bottom on the right and you click on that, you've got an import data option. Click on that, you get the same screen except in this case, it's actually given you the URL or in this case, the position on your hard drive where the data can be found. So that's a little bit more useful. So this is a useful tool to help you import your data from Excel if you don't know how to write the code, right? How to write the code to get R to go and fetch the data and bring it in and create an object, etc., etc. I'm gonna teach you how to do both. So let's just quickly have a look at this tool. At the top is where the data is gonna be found. And in this case, you can see it's on my hard drive. Then underneath that, there's a preview of the data. This is what it's gonna look like when you bring it into R. You've got a few options here. There's some pull down menus. You can change the kind of, of variable that it is that it's looking at. We might wanna make that into a character. We might wanna say this is numeric. We've also got the option of skipping. We can skip that variable if we wanted to for et cetera, et cetera. Down at the bottom on the left, you've got a few more options. Firstly, there's a name. So this is the name that R will assign to the data set when it in imports it and it will create an object in your environment with that name. So we might wanna call it my data, for example. You can choose the sheet that R is gonna look at or the tab. So if you look at our spreadsheet here, we've got three tabs at the bottom or three sheets that it could look at. And by default, R is gonna always look at the first one, but you can tell it with this pull down menu to look at one of the other two or three or whatever you've got. You can specify a range in the spreadsheet itself, and I'm going to show you an example of doing that in just a minute. You can say you, a maximum number of rows. So let's say, for example, you just wanted five rows of data. You can see that R automatically narrows down the range of data that it's going to import just to the top five. If you just leave, if you leave that blank, it'll import all of it. This skip function is very useful because if we have a look at our data over here, all right, here's our original data set. That's all looking nice and neat and tidy. In the, the gap tab or this sheet over here, we've got the same data, but in this case, the first two rows are not very useful. So we could tell R using this tool to go to the gap and to skip the first two rows and voila. Now you'll notice that R is always using the first row as the names of the columns or the names of the variables. If you unclick first name as rows or first row as names, it'll assign its own names to the variables like that. The open data in viewer is an option. If you want to view the data immediately after having imported it, then fine, you can do that. I usually, I usually untick that. Right, to show you how to use these two functions, the range and the NA, which really, there we're really talking about missing data. Let's have a look at our spreadsheet. If we go to the third tab, the one that's called position. Firstly, our data is sitting in a funny place on the spreadsheet. Secondly, I've deliberately put in some missing data and I've, I've just put, I've just said in this data frame, missing data is gonna be two stars. If we go back to our studio, what do we wanna do? Firstly, we say, this is the third sheet, the position sheet that we're looking at. We wanna tell it what range to look at. So let's go back here. This has gotta be from C4 to G14, C4 to G14. And immediately in our data preview, we can see that R has found the data exactly where we asked it to. Here we can see these, these little two stars are there and it hasn't recognized that as missing data at this point. So if we tell, if we tell R that two stars, bam, bam, is missing data, now have a look and it's got NA, it's recognized that as missing data. Now this is where things get interesting. In this tool, we've got an import button and you're gonna be tempted to click on that, don't click on that. 
I'm going to suggest instead of doing that, click on this little icon at the top on the right, just above this code section, and it's going to copy the code that you need to import the data into R. Click on cancel, go into R Studio, into your source, and paste your code straight in there. Okay, let's have a look at that code before we run it. Shift Control 1 to zoom in on the source. The first line of code that got pasted in is it says library read XL. Read XL is a package. We've talked about packages in a previous video. Packages expand the vocabulary of R and the capabilities of R. Read XL is automatically installed on your computer if you're working in R Studio. So you don't need to install it. Once something's installed once, it's there forever. But you do need to load it if you want to use the function, right? So in this case, we type in library, or you can use require, that's another way of calling or loading a, 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 a package. Next, my data, that's what we've said this object is gonna be called. So once we've pulled the data into R, we wanna assign that data to an object so that we can use it. We're calling that data, my data, we could call it anything, so that's fine. Next, we've got the name of the function. So in this case, the function is read Excel. Next to a function, we have open and close brackets. And within the brackets, we have the various parameters and arguments. This is how we tell R what to do. The first thing we do, and we separate them with commas. And we can actually put these on, on, on separate lines. So we could actually put that on a, a line like that. So they're in a nice little row and it's easy to read. The first thing we do is we tell R where to fetch the data and what the file name is. In this case, the data is in a subfolder within my working directory called data. Then we put forward slash, the name of the file itself and the extension, all within inverted commas. Next, in this case, we're telling R that the sheet that we want R to look at is called position. It's also the case that this was sheet number three, so we could change that to three if we wanted to. We've said that the range is between C4 and G14, and we've said that NA, it must recognize the two stars as missing values NA. So let's go back to the four quadrants in R Studio. Shift, Control, Zero. Uh, we're going to make this a bit smaller so we can see what we're doing. And if I run these two lines of code, right, I have to run both of them. As expected, R has imported the data. It's created an object called my data. If we click on that object, we can have a look at it. We can see that R has identified our missing data as NA. And now we can start our analysis. Now, there are many other arguments that you might want to include in, in importing your data. And just so that you know, if you push question mark and you push in a function, in this case, read Excel and then command enter, R brings up all of the help that's required to use that. And in this case, you can see all of the various arguments that can be used in the read Excel function. So if you are serious about learning how to analyze data and you want to learn R programming, then hit the subscribe button now and hit the little bell notification if you want to get notified of future videos. Please hang up and try again.